Hello and welcome to Jazz Guitar Chord Melody Part 9. Hi, this is Mike Hayes and before we get started, just a quick reminder that if this is the first video you've seen in the series or if you'd like to do some catch-up work on some of the previous lessons, there's a link in the description below to all the previous Jazz Guitar Chord Melody lessons. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you'll be notified as soon as the next video in the series is available. In our last session, the focus was on creating a passing chord arrangement for the A section of O to Joy. So now let's go over to the B section and see how that shapes up. I'm going to play the melody line for the B section, and don't forget to check out the basic chords as you follow the lead line along with me. Next step is we'll create a passing chord arrangement for the bridge of Ode to Joy using exactly the same principles as we did last session. Right then, let's get to work. Under the first note of the bridge, the note A, we'll place an F sharp half diminished chord. When we move to the B note, we'll place a G major seventh chord under that note and then we move on to the last note in that bar, which is a G note in the melody. So under that G note, we'd put an E minor seventh chord. Onto the second bar, we have the note A again, so that would be F sharp half diminished. Next note is a B, so that's G major seventh. Over to a C note. This time we could play an A minor seventh under that note. Next note is B, so that would be G major 7th. And then the last note in the second bar, a G, we'd play an E minor 7th. On to bar 3, and we have the note A, so that would be our F sharp half diminished. Next note is B, that would be G major 7th. The C note, we'd place an A minor 7th underneath the C. The next note is B, so that's G major 7th again. And then the last note in the third bar, the note A, we'd put the F sharp half diminished under that note. And now the last bar, we have the note G, so we'd play E minor 7th under the G note. Over to the note A, that would be F sharp half diminished. And then the last note in the B section, the note D. So far, we've been very fortunate in that all the notes of the melody have sat really easily on the first string of the guitar. But this note being D goes outside the range of our first string. So what we'll do here is play the D note on the second string at the third fret. And here's the D seventh voicing that I'd use to place underneath the note D. I'll now play through the bridge using the passing chords we've just described. So here it is, so you can have a listen to the B section of Ode to Joy played as a passing chord arrangement. <laughs> I'm now going to play the whole piece all the way through as a passing chord arrangement. See if you can keep with me as I'm playing it through and check out the different sections as I'm playing them. <laughs> Thank you. 
Did you notice I did something different? In fact, I did two things different. I've included two different chords that we haven't spoke about so far. If you were really listening closely, you'll notice that I didn't play a D7 chord at the end of the B section. What I played was a D7 suspended fourth with an A bass. You might already know this chord as an A minor 11th. It has a similar effect as like the first chord in the Beatles' Hard Day's Night. It creates a lot of mystery and intrigue, and that's the idea now. Up till this point, we've only been working on sections of the song. And now that we've completed our first musical sketch, or draft if you like, we can stand back and get a different perspective on our work. So our focus now is on how to make it interesting and how to tie all these pieces together. The other chord that I changed was the very last chord. I played a G6-9 chord instead of an E minor. And I did that just to bring the whole piece to a close. Our work now is to run a critical ear over the arrangement. We're looking for weak spots or things that we could make more interesting. And since we're working on the B section today, I'm going to play several different versions of the B section. And the only thing I'm doing is changing the last chord. So I'm calling the last chord of the B section a transition chord because I'm trying to get a way of moving from the B section back to the A section. I'm going to start by playing the exact same passing chord arrangement of the B section with the D7 chord as the transition chord. This is the arrangement that you heard earlier. Here we go just to refresh our memory of the sound. Here's the same section of music and I'm only changing the last chord. I'm changing the last chord to a different inversion of D7. So instead of being a D7th with the D as the root note, I'm changing it to an inversion of the D7th chord which features the 7th in the bass. So it's going to be a D7th with the C bass as the transition chord. I think you'll agree that was only one chord but it has a different musical weight or density and of course I've spoke about this in earlier sessions but as we go along you'll realize that these sort of ways of thinking about chords will have more impact on your music. I'm going to play one more version of the B section this time the transition chord will be D7 suspended with an A bass. This is the chord I used earlier when I played the complete arrangement. Have a listen to the effect of this chord. Once again, a different chord and a different musical colour and a different effect. Of course, there's no correct answer here. All those chords will work as a transition chord. The thing to keep in mind is that our ear has a memory but no eyes. So that when we're playing our arrangement, what we're trying to do is to get variety in our work. So by changing just one chord, as the listener is reintroduced to the A section, our choice of transition chord will affect the way the listener hears the last A section. Right then, before we go on, now would be a good time to review what we've achieved so far. 
We know how to make arrangements using the major sixth diminished scale, and we also know how to make arrangements using the passing chords. And now I'd like to discuss something so obvious and so basic that it's quite often overlooked as a resource for creating chord melody arrangements on guitar. And that is the basic triad. I'll cover some of the application and possibilities of using triads in the next session, but for today, let's play the triads derived from the G major scale. I'm going to play each chord and hold it for two beats, and I'll be playing through the scale twice. OK, just in case you're thinking there's nothing special about triads, I'm going to round off this session with an arrangement of Ode to Joy where I'm playing passing chords in the A section, but when I get to the B section, I'm going to use our mighty triads. <laughs> Well there you go. I hope you can hear how effective triads can be when used as a contrast to other chordal textures. It's very much like how a black and white photograph can stand out in amongst a whole lot of other wonderfully coloured photographs, but the black and white has some quality that really makes it stand out. I'll be covering that full arrangement with the triads in the next session, plus a whole lot more. So don't forget, if you've got any questions or comments, pop them in the comments section below on the video. And don't forget to subscribe so you get notified as soon as our next video is out. Once again, I hope you've got a lot out of this video, and I look forward to catching up with you again next time. Bye for now.